And British Prime Minister David Cameron is meeting with European Union officials to discuss the UK's renegotiation of its membership. Cameron will try to hammer out a deal with European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. Cameron is demanding that the UK be allowed to put limits on immigration and welfare payments for EU migrants. And once a deal on Cameron's proposed reforms is reached, the UK will then hold a referendum on its EU membership, which is due by the end of 2017. Well, let's get more on this trip. We're joined by Dennis, Dennis McShane uh, from London. He is Britain's former Minister of State for Europe. Many thanks for joining us. And Dennis, the big sticking point until now has been Britain demanding a four-year ban on EU migrants receiving these benefits. Europe has rejected this categorically until now. Has anything changed? I don't think so. I mean, what everybody's tried to do is find a, a compromise, a fudge, if you like, that allows Mr. Cameron to say he's altered slightly the relationship between the EU and the rest uh, and, and the United Kingdom and then uh, put it to a referendum which he hopes to win. Uh, I don't think there's a dramatic new development. People really, this is Europe at its best and its worst, finding magical forms of words that try and satisfy everybody without really delivering very much. So where, is, uh, where are things in terms of the mood music in Britain at the moment towards this EU referendum? What, what is the feeling, in or out? The very latest poll from a professor at Coventry University whose modelling predicted exactly the Scottish referendum result last year, he says today uh, that his modelling suggests that Brexit would win by about 4%. And oddly enough, he argues that whatever deal Mr Cameron brings back, it alerts and irritates people. Uh, we've been living for 20 years with very hostile positions from the press, from many politicians, the Conservative Party, the very populist nationalist UKIP party, and really Mr Cameron has to start a negotiation with his own people, with the people of Britain, to persuade them to stay in the European Union. The negotiations and talks with the European leaders is the easy bit. The hard graph starts now. Indeed. Where is this going to leave David Cameron if he's defeated in the referendum? What is the political fallout for him? If he loses, if the people reject his recommendation to stay in, this will be one of the biggest foreign policy humiliations that a British Prime Minister has ever suffered, analogous perhaps to Neville Chamberlain isolating Britain before the war or Anthony Eden's crazy adventure in Suez in the 1950s. Undoubtedly, in my judgment, Mr Cameron would have to resign. He says he is going to stand down in the next two or years or so anyway, and I think he would have to go and a new prime minister would have to pick up the mess. Uh, very interesting to get your perspective on that. Dennis McShane joining us there from London. He's a former, uh, Britain's former Minister of State for Europe.